Hello, welcome back to Destination Scratch. This is episode seven, and today I'm gonna to do something that I think you all should be doing, which is mapping my irons. So I'm gonna go into the simulator today and I'm gonna give my irons a gap test. Now, I've actually not done this with my current set of irons. Um, I've kind of just played around in the simulator with clubs and kind of guesstimated my distances. So today I'm gonna to go in and do pitching wedge to four iron and gap them properly and see just how far these clubs are going. If you've never done this, it's something I strongly suggest you do. Down here at my, in my shop, I do a lot of bag mapping sessions, probably five or six a week, of people who want to know their distances. Now, what you have to bear in mind when you're doing a mapping session like this, is this is the distance with no elements involved. There's no wind, no humidity, no height, nothing. This is the distance that the clubs are going. So when you go out on the golf course, you have to take all those, calculate all those little things in your head, like if it's into wind, if it's downwind, if you're higher than sea level, if you're you know playing abroad somewhere, how hot it is or how cold it is, because all that can make a difference on how far the ball goes. But it's always good to know the baseline of what distance your clubs will go. Part of Destination Scratch, if I want to get better at golf, is I need to know how far my clubs are going, not just a guesstimate thinking, well, it's about 165 for a seven iron or it's about 150 for an eight iron. I need to know where the shots are going. Now, when you do a mapping session, if you go to a decent place, they should only map or only give you the average of your good shots. So like here, for example, we do five shots per club, although I'm only gonna do three today. We do five shots per club, and then the system picks the best three. But what I do is I make sure there's five good shots in there, because what we don't wanna be doing is mapping your fats, your thins, your duffs, your shanks, because it's pointless knowing how far they go. You wanna know how far your good shots go, not how far your bad shots go. You can work out, you know, you don't wanna be playing for your bad shots, you wanna be playing for the good shots. That's my opinion anyway, is like if I've got 150, I know my eight iron goes 150, I'm hitting an eight iron. If I fat it, thin it, chunk it, whatever, it's down to me, it's not down to the club. I'm not gonna hit a seven iron thinking I'm gonna fat a seven iron there, I wanna hit a good shot. So uh, today, I'm going in the simulator and I'm finding out just how far all my clubs go. And if I've got any gaps that I maybe need to tweak lofts a little bit with. So there's only one thing to do, Let's get in the simulator and do this. All right then, so we'll start the bag mapping with the pitching wedge. I'm gonna hit three shots with each club. I'm going up to my two iron, not my four iron, just to get all the distances. Um, and then I'll get a lovely little PDF at the end, which will show me uh, all the gappings and the average distances. We're starting off with pitching wedge, hitting three shots. I think this is about 125 to 130. Um, and I'll delete any bad shots out because I don't want them in there. That's a good shot to start with. Hopefully about 125 to 130. Exactly what I'm looking for. So in theory, I know this distance, I don't need to hit the other three, but other two, but we'll quickly hit them anyway. So we've hit the pitching wedge onto nine iron. That was a 128, 129, 130. So there or thereabouts, that'll be an average of 129. So nine iron now, I'm hoping is about a 140 to 145 club. I know I'm picking up a bit of speed with this drop at the top, but that is a big gap from 130. Moving on to eight iron. Uh, 
up 155 is where I'm probably expecting this to go maybe 160 at a push Yeah, 155 to 160 is where I think. Obviously it's strike dependent, so this is just an average, it's something for me to work on. And another good hit. Seven iron then, uh, 170. To, is where I think I want this to be. Looking at where the six is, about a 170 club for the seven iron. Didn't really get all of that one. That's a better idea of where the seven iron can go. That was a great hit. So onto the six iron then, kind of 185-ish club is where I would normally use this at. I've not really tested this since I've done that drop at the top there and I'm gaining a bit of distance. Bit of a pull there. Not really happy with the way that six I went actually. There's a couple of shots I could redo, but the first shot was good, so I'll use that as the gapping shot when it comes to looking at it at the end. Right, five iron. This used to be about 195, is what I think. That's going to be a good reflection on where this five iron goes. One eighty-nine. That's pretty close to the uh, the six actually. That's better. That is a much better hit. That's going to have that draw on it. Yeah, that's a much better idea of where this is going. 200. It's fine by me. So when you're doing these mapping sessions, it's good to know what a good shot and like a, a bad shot is for yourself. I know that's my Sunday best with this five iron and that I can get it out there at 200 yards. That's a thin bullet. Right, if I was doing this and look at what in the distances, what in the actual printout, I'd redo a couple of those shots. But having that one good shot in there means I can analyze that and know what the distances are. Right, four iron, probably about 205 it was, but looking at them, Probably want this to be about 210 now to, to have warrant it being in the bag. Bit of a toe shot. Not too bad.
Very similar to the five iron, isn't it? Very similar. Bit lower, bit lower spinning than the five. Come on, let's get a good one out of this. Okay, and the final club is the two iron. Now the four and the five look very similar there. Um, so we'll have a look at the end and possibly discuss that. All right, two iron last. Possibly pulling left a bit, so that'll be good for sort of distance. Yeah, 210. Guess this is a 210 club. That was a good hit. That'll be a good reflection on what this two iron can do. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Uh, so that's the bag map. We'll go down into the data and have a look at it and see where. I can make improvements or whether I need to maybe change some clubs. Right, so that's a bag map. Obviously it's a quicker version of a bag map that I've just used for the benefit of this video. If I was doing this with somebody properly, then the chances are they're not going to get as many good strikes in a row as I got. I was quite lucky there apart from a few doffs. So this can take up to about an hour, maybe a little bit longer, depending on how many clubs in the bag they are, because we do a full bag map. But what we'll do is we'll take, I just want to check where my irons are, so we'll take a look at the data here and see where improvements can be made or where any adjustments to lofts can possibly be looked at. So this first screen here is a little bit of just an overview. So you can see there that um, the pitching wedge 9 iron, 8 iron, 7 iron, 6 iron, 5 iron, there's quite good gapping in there, but then the 4 is quite close and then the 2 iron is a little bit further out, but the, I'd expect that because there's a gap for a 3 iron there. So looking at that, it's quite good, the gap in on the club. So my average club gap is 12.1 yards, which is perfect for me. Um, the closest gap is five yards, which is a little bit too close, which we'll need to look at a little bit further. So pitching wedge, average carry 129, very consistent, 128, 129, 130. So, you know, 130 club, which is perfect. Nine iron, average carry 143. So we've got 139, 140, 147. Um, I'd take that average of 143 and just if I can step on it a little bit then I can probably gain a few more yards out of there. 8 iron 157, that's a 14 yard gap between the 9 and the 8 which is it's not great but the problem is is I can get one out there at 162 so I maybe need to look at that 9, 8 um, and maybe just weaken the 8 one degree possibly just to bring that a little bit closer. 7 iron, 168, 11 yard gap, perfect. If I can, if I weaken that 8, that'll probably be about a 12 to 13 yard gap and then it'd be the same the other way. So definitely um, they're there or thereabouts when it comes to sort of the lower end. I know where the gaps are. Um, and if I need to step on one, I can get it out there at 177. 6 iron, 14 yard gap, 182, perfect. I, you know, these, these are working exactly where I'd want them to be. 5 iron, 119. I would expect these gaps to be a little bit lower as we get into the longer irons because the, the lofts do get closer from like 4 degrees difference to 3. So this is exactly what I'd expect. Uh, 190 and I can get it out there at 199 if I need to but I think 190 is about right for the 5 iron. 4 iron, 195. Um, there was a 188 in there that brought it down. It's a 200 yard club. Looking at the 5 iron at 190. The four iron is a 200 yard club, so that first one was just not a great hit. So, you know, the the, map, the gap in there is perfect. And then two iron is 214. I'd say it's more 220. It's more that last shot is more where the two iron is at 220. And then obviously 200 to 220, if I had a three iron, that would be in the middle there, but I don't have a three iron. I have a four iron and then a two iron, and then I have a hybrid for that versatility, which, um, I can either get out there, I'd say that's normally 210 to 215 carry at a 20 degree, but I can step on it and get it out there a little bit more, but it's that versatility off the fairway or out the rough that I want that in there instead of having a three iron. 
So there you go, there is um, a bag mapping for Destination Scratch, that's my irons mapped. I now know if I take that out on the course I can take the calculations of wind speed, humidity, heat, you know, upslope, downslope, all them sort of things and I know my baseline distances for my irons now which is perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write them down um, or get a black sharpie and do what Lee Westwood does and write them on the back of the clubs which um, is possibly an option I think I might go for. So I might write them on so I know if I've got a yardage I can just look at the club and I know which is the right club for it, taking into account all the elements. I hope that's been of some benefit to you. If you are interested in a bag mapping, you are in the Plymouth area, hit me up, get you down here, we can cover that. But if you're not, visit any of your local pros or anything like that and get a mapping session done. It is well worth doing just to know how far you hit those irons, woods, everything. Um, it's just, you know, the more knowledge you've got, you take out to the course, the better your golf's gonna be. There's gonna be no guesswork. You're gonna know exactly what your yardages are. As for me, um, it's interesting that that drop at the top has gained me a little bit more yardage on some of the irons that I wasn't expecting or what I'm not used to, so I'm gonna have to account for that now when I play golf. But it's good that the distances, the spin rates, and the gap in is, is consistent. So I know I don't have to make any adjustments to my irons, maybe the eight, but that just, instead of before I do that, I'm just gonna tinker and make sure it wasn't down to strike before I start making any adjustments. The same as the five and the four, they're very close on this test, but I just think it was down to strike. I think 190, 200 is perfect for those two clubs. Otherwise, I'll see you next time on Destination Scratch episode eight. Don't know what that'll be yet. And also remember, if you do wanna win a Strixon utility iron, some balls and a glove, click the card up here, go to one of my other Destination Scratch videos. And once I hit 5,000 subscribers, that will be given away to one lucky person who comments on that video. So head over there, comment on that video, watch it, and um, good luck to you. And I'll speak to you all again very, very soon.